Evening. How is everybody? These chairs are weird because the the little footrest actually turns with them, and so you like if once you start turning, it's all over. <laughs> I'm going to be doing announcements facing the cross in a minute. A uh, couple of things uh, to remind you. Of. <laughs> you feel okay over there? I think so. Turning Point USA Faith Biblical Citizenship class starts tomorrow. That is at 6 p.m. And uh, so if you signed up for that, then please make sure that you show up here at 6 p.m. tomorrow. And then that will run every other Friday. Uh, ladies first breakfast this Saturday, September 2nd at 9 a.m. Uh, so ladies bring your breakfast and come on out and join the other ladies for a good time of fellowship and uh, eating together and a devotional time in the word. Kids Cove is having a family ice cream social. So if you volunteer in the Kids Cove in any capacity uh, on any of our evenings or you are uh, a parent with kids in Kids Cove, then come on out on Saturday, September 2nd, 1.30 p.m. That's this Saturday in the galley for a ice cream social. And that will be at 1.30. I also want to mention that Breakwater Men's Breakfast is the following Saturday, September 9th at 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, your breakfast will be prepared for you. And uh, I know the ladies always boo, but none of them have stepped up to cook breakfast for each other. So uh, when the Lord lays that on some lady's heart to make breakfast for the ladies, then we will gladly accept that. Um, I, I'm just leaving it up to God. Uh, he'll have to just lay it on your heart. So uh, Breakwater Men's Breakfast Saturday, September 9th at 9 a.m. in the galley. And then church anniversary potluck is at noon next, uh, not this Saturday, but a week from Saturday. We'll be meeting down at Keller Park, and uh, we'll be grilling up some burgers and hot dogs, and we encourage you to join us out there. Bring your softball equipment, because we'll have a softball game, lots of other uh, games and stuff for the kiddos, and we encourage you to come on out. Bring umbrellas, I would say, for the sun, because it's been hot lately, but this summer, bring an umbrella, because we just... We, it might snow. I, I mean, it's, this summer has been the weirdest ever. And I think, is that it? It's hard when I don't have my pulpit. Oh, Anchored in Truth classes start Tuesday, September 12th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, there is a cost for that. They will be going through the panoramic view of fulfilled prophecy. Uh, cost is $20 per person, $30 per couple. Don't let that stop you. If you want to be involved and money's tight right now, then please just let us know. We can take care of that for you. Then Saturday, September 16th, if you have a motorcycle, we're meeting here at 8 o'clock for our Just for Fun Run motorcycle ride, uh, as long as it's not snowing. And uh, that's Saturday, September 16th, and we're going to ride, and then we'll have lunch up in Palmer Lake. And I, I get this question all the time. No, you do not have to have a Harley. Uh, you just have to have something more than a moped. Okay, so uh, you just bring whatever motorcycle you have. Uh, Wise Woman Fall Bible Study begins Wednesday, September 20th. There are two classes available, uh, 9.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Uh, the cost for that is $7 per person. Again, we can take care of that if you need us to. Uh, Janine will be studying with the ladies through the motivational gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, from Romans chapter 12. And you can register on the Church Center app, and registration ends. Thank you. September 10th, <sighs> we are in need of some uh, Kids Co. volunteers, so if you can help out with that, uh, specifically for Saturday night, and also we have some availability for Sunday morning. Uh, Awanas began last weekend, and I mentioned that we had some needs, and those were filled, so um, it's ministering to kids, you can't have too many people helping, uh, so if you still want to volunteer for any of that, we can certainly put you to work. Um, but I just want to let you know that the Lord did provide those volunteers for us. Uh, Operation Christmas Child will be coming up, so save your shoeboxes and uh, take advantage of back-to-school sales on school supplies. All right. That's it for that. I told you we had a lot and of announcements. And now in French. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of you already know uh, Pastor Keith Pentar, and he was my actually my second assistant pastor when I was over at Rocky Mountain Calvary. And uh, I was one time sitting on my back deck talking to Mike Roselle uh, about the fact that Jeff was getting ready to head up to Greeley and start a church up there. And he told me about Keith. 
uh, he knew Keith from Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. And so uh, Michael and I got to talk and he says, oh, I mean, you got to meet this guy. You got to talk to this guy. And if I remember correctly, I think he actually called you from my deck and uh, and gave me the phone. Yeah, that sounds like Mike. And uh, <laughs> so so we got to talking and it turned out that it was really a good fit for us for that season uh, in ministry at Rocky Mount Calvary. And uh, I got to know Keith, got to know his story um, from his roots as a glam rocker with uh, U.S. Toys. In fact, I think that's him with the um, the red. I'm choosing not to the, look. You should you should look. That that's him with the in the red. Uh, so we'll just call him Master Sergeant Pintar now. Uh, <laughs> So. Nobody said God bless you. I sneezed just to see if I, <laughs> you don't have They're music here on Thursdays. At your Usually, picture. <laughs> I'm trying to draw attention away from the picture. <laughs> so um, he came out and was a real blessing uh, for us in so many ways at Rocky Mountain Calvary. Got us through a, a big growth period and uh, just helped us out a lot on the worship end. So he's going to do some music tonight, but I thought I would just kind of take a few moments to... Uh, just talk with him a little bit because a lot has happened. Do you remember what year it was that you went, uh, left RMC and headed back 99. to Florida at 99? So it's been a, a year or two. <laughs> yeah, it's been a couple few years. Yeah, I think you still had long hair, actually. Yeah, then. I don't have the spandex anymore. But, so. <laughs> yeah. so tell us what's transpired since you left. Uh, well, I've been homeless and destitute version. for a quarter century ever since I left Colorado. No, no. Well, the only reason we left, the Lord was calling us to start a church, and uh, I knew that that would happen one day. I just didn't think that uh, it would happen at the time that it did, but it did. And um, I think we were working on a worship project at the time for the church then too. Yeah, I think uh, we just George finished and it up. And stuff, and so yeah, yeah, we had finished it up, and the Lord called us. Uh, I got to tell y'all. Um, so the Lord gave us, gave me Nehemiah chapter one, because I'm like, Lord, where? And it's like the homeland. That's where you're going to go plant the church back to the Florida, because my wife and I are Floridians. And then it says Nehemiah um, went to the king. I'm like, the king, that's Brian's nickname. The king at home. Like, can you be a little more specific, Lord? I mean, uh, go back to the homeland of Florida, go to the king. And for like a month. Um, I was I was chicken glamour chick. I didn't because I was like I I don't know exactly where in Florida, and uh, but the Lord so you thought I'd just let you later. go. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to feel a call, Brian. Okay, bye. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's only like 20 million people down there, but somewhere there. So, but no, he did pinpoint it, and uh, we went and we started a a church, Calvary Chapel Jacksonville. Um, uh, we thought it would be a fast grow thing because we came from Rocky Mountain and that was growing like weeds because we came from Fort Lauderdale before that. And that was just crazy through the roof growth. And uh, it didn't happen like that right away. And uh, some uh, friends, um, Malcolm Wilde and actually at the time, Bob Coy, said, are you sure you want, you want to go there? Because uh, I said, it's, yeah, no, I know it's the Bible belt. And he says, well, sometimes you get more belt than Bible there, too. So I'm like, what? Huh? And I didn't understand that till later. But uh, so um, I got a tent gig and uh, carried luggage for five years at a resort uh, while we got up and running. And then my wife um, uh, waitressed for three and a half years back then. And actually, the church graciously had, I think you said you were never going to do that again <laughs> because it was very generous. <laughs> and I think it was like 18K or something like that. I took a bucket. And so. For the first year I went, I was able to study. Yeah, we, did. we took a special offering to yeah. send you out. Yeah, yeah. And so that was very appreciative and appreciated. So Our that kind of helped launch us. And, um, I, you know, uh, pastored for uh, 22 years down at Calvary Chapel, uh, Jacksonville. So that's the short end of a long uh, time being senior pastor there. So you're still married to Christy? Uh, I haven't called her lately, but I think, uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, we were just texting before that. She said to tell you okay. and Janine, hi, by the so way. So you're still married. Yes, That's still married. 30 years. Yes. God bless her. Let's hear it. Yeah. <laughs> um, known her 31 years and uh, never a problem. Total bliss. And you all know how that is. So like, uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, I've talked to Christy. Don't call her. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you. And you, so your boys basically grew up in Florida then. No. They did. They did. Well, yeah, we had, uh, gosh, Ed, my son, my stepson, he's 38 now, but he was, uh, gosh, 11 or 12. 
when we were here. And then Cody, uh, just he was born in Colorado here in the Springs. And then Tyler, the middle one, was born in Fort Lauderdale. So we've got two out of three in Florida and one in Fort Wayne married with uh, uh, four grandkids. Of ours. So. Yeah. Oh, four grandkids? Yeah. Wow, congrats. Yeah, they're the best, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they are. You yeah. sugar them up, and you bounce them around, and then you leave. It's the best. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you've now um, – it was kind of interesting when we – I think one of the last times we had talked uh, a couple years ago, you were getting ready to transition into what you're doing now. Yeah. Um, yep. And I know it was, a, it was a real struggle because you didn't feel like you had somebody really to take over the church. It was coming out of COVID. And it was a real struggle. A lot of churches have really struggled yeah. to gain traction again yep. after COVID. Yeah. And you, I know we're wrestling with the idea of shutting the church down and going yeah. into, and I, I know that's not a comfortable thing to talk about, but I think it's really important uh, for a congregation to hear when it, how a pastor struggles through something like yeah. that. Because I, I think there's a, in a lot of minds, there's almost a stigma, like shutting the church down. But I was, actually listening to a podcast last week and they were talking to another pastor who had shut his church down and the counsel that he got, he had talked to Britt Merrick and, and uh, from uh, reality church Carpinteria and Britt said, you know, why do we assume that just because something was birthed that it's going to live forever? Because nothing in this fallen world lives forever. None of the True. churches in the book of acts are still in existence True. today. And uh, so can you talk about that yeah. difficult Yeah, uh, I, I have to rewind before we can go to two years ago, though. And, and you know, and, you know, you graciously a allowed me and you were in on, which was great, as Fort Lauderdale let me to um, do a lot of evangelism and music and outreach. So that's always been in my DNA and was in it for 22 years, Calvary Chapel Jacksonville. We had people going to nursing homes with me, um, prison ministry, homeless ministry, school chapels, uh, you name it, and uh, beach reach, we do all kinds of things. So um, that was always in my DNA, and um, I thought, well, uh, you know, I love the teaching thing and uh, leading worship. We had some other people that could lead worship and teach, too. But around 2011, I became very disheartened. My dad had gotten very sick. He had a heart attack in our bed on Christmas Eve. Um, we always gave my parents our, 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 our bedroom when they came from Miami. And so it was a really hard time. They couldn't go back to Miami. He was in an out of Mayo clinic um, and uh, uh, passed away. And at the time, um, I was just really frustrated with uh, that a lot of people weren't doing evangelism with me like I thought that they should. I, we had some, a dozen or so, and that was great. But I was very disillusioned, and there was another guy in the church at the time that had come up um, and was volunteering and just deep, you know, um, discipleship, men's study, all that stuff. And so, and he was great at it. He still is. He's still in Florida at another Calvary now. We're friends. And um, I thought, you know, my heart's just not uh, in that. That's great that we have a discipler, but I want to go, I want to go fishing for men. I, I want to save souls, but I also want to be. Anyway, um, long story made short. Uh, because of doing homeless ministry and stuff, I met a couple. He was the head neurosurgeon at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, and his wife was a nurse. And they would come to the Beaches Mission House where I do a Tuesday night, every Tuesday night, like a gospel sing-along. Well, Billy Graham was uh, uh, his patient for Parkinson's, and so he would come from Montcrieff from North Carolina, Franklin or Gigi or whoever would bring him and uh, with AIDS and um, treat him for Parkinson's. Well, he nursing had heard, AIDS. pardon? Nursing AIDS. Nursing AIDS? Billy Graham did not have AIDS. Oh, I was just clarifying. did I say AIDS? I said, said he, brought, he came with AIDS. I mean, and oh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can we edit this, John? I mean, just, and, and that picture, too. Where'd that rumor uh, get started? <laughs> Springs Lighthouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said that Billy Graham, I do not have that. <laughs> in heaven, I have nothing. Okay. But anyways, so for whatever reason, with his assistance, aides that assisted him, he actually, um, uh, I got a friend, a call from my friend one day, uh, that the nurse and the doctor, and they said, he wants to meet you. And I said, who? You know, Jesus, I'm in trouble. And they said, no, Billy Graham. 
because we've been telling them when he comes to visit about this outreach and they'd have him over their house for dinner. They were friends with him. And I said, I said, I'm in shorts and flip flops. I'm taking my kids to school. I'm in no position. And she says, he doesn't care. It's, 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 it's Billy Graham. He doesn't care what you do. And so she said, can you be there in an hour at the hotel in, in a Ponte Vedra Beach, which was close to Mayo Clinic? So I went. And, um, uh, you know, uh, I was like surreal as soon as I, he came out. And he's at the time about 92. He had his sunglasses, his walker. The assistant aides uh, came and brought him <laughs> out there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I said, Dr. Graham, it's such an honor. I've, I know all about your ministry. Everybody knows about my ministry. I want to hear about your ministry, you know, and <laughs> da 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 da. And, I, you know, Angie and Doug tell me all these things, you know, so let's go over here and talk. So I'm like, I'm going to talk to Billy Graham. I'm gonna so the gist of the conversation was I said, I feel like maybe quitting. You know, uh, my dad just passed away. It was just a horrible thing. Um, there's some things going on in the church. I, I Nobody's really following my, me like I thought they would doing evangelism, like in Fort Lauderdale and in Colorado, as much as those two churches. And uh, he goes, don't you dare quit. Don't you throw in the towel. And he said, there needs to be more pastors that have a heart for evangelism that get outside of the fishbowl. And he says, you keep doing what you're doing. He says, there needs to be more of them that are doing that. And then this was the clincher, and this was prophetic. And he said, at the end of it, he says, before I pray for you, he goes, I just want to tell you. He goes, I wouldn't be surprised if one day the Lord calls you back into full-time evangelism and music ministry like when you were serving at Fort Lauderdale Youth for Christ. Because that before I got involved with Calvary Chapel, I was a local missionary with YFC raising support, doing all that, cutting grass, do whatever. And um, I said, really? He goes, he goes, I just feel like I'm supposed to tell you that, you know. Uh, and um, so uh, he prayed for me. Um, I went back and uh, 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 did 10 more years. Um, like, you know, when Billy Graham talks to you, you know, it's, uh, it's Jesus, you know, Holy Spirit, Father God, and then Billy Graham, you know, and he's with the Lord now, but. I so guess you I needed to scump <laughs> yourself into uh, being yeah. counseled by Billy Graham. Yeah. Uh, I guess I needed to hear it from somebody <laughs> like that because I thought, you know, I, you know, I thought I, I can do the small scale Greg Laurie thing, evangelist, and also pastor a church, and it was it was difficult. And um, but he encouraged me to keep doing it, and I went back and I told the congregation, "This is what the Lord said to Billy Graham." And all at once, we started getting like twenty, thirty volunteers going out with me. Small church, couple, few hundred people. At the time, we fluctuated. And uh, anyway, so um, we started going out. Well, then um, uh, 10 years passed, and I really didn't think much about what he said all at once. Um, here comes, uh, last time I was out here was 2019, six months later in, uh, in March or April of 21, COVID. Everything changed, right? Time war, things, you know. And so uh, we have a good governor uh, that's all I'll say. But still, we had lockdowns and stuff. I'm not saying that yours isn't, but I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there right now. They, they'll say Let's, it for you. We won't edit this part, <laughs> I guess. I'll just like. <laughs> but anyway, um, so uh, 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 we closed down as most most churches did for I think for four weeks, and uh, just to obey the laws of the land. And we, you know, some stayed open, but 99% closed longer than we did. Any. And so I was doing the video teaching, the live stream thing, like most pastors at the time. And um, all at once, I just started thinking, you know, Lord, is this, is this, I remember what, you know, Billy Graham said, you're going to go out at some point. Is it, I wouldn't be surprised if you go out and start doing, and, you know, that's always been in my heart, in my DNA. And so um, I was like, is this the time to do that? And the, I prayed about it, and the Lord said, no, don't you dare go and leave the sheep now because they're scared. It's a pandemic. Nobody knows what this thing is. Um, we still don't. I have my opinions on that too. We're probably similar opinions, but anyway. Um, so uh, came back and, uh, 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 you know, um, we had a primarily an older congregation, seasoned saints, and um, a lot of them never um, returned. They were doing the online church thing which I'm not opposed to, but, um, you know, when I'm not sure how it was here, but half people wore masks, half didn't. There was all that. 
you know, that was always a fun time for pastors to try to navigate through that, right? So, and, um, but we, we made it through that, but I, I, I was feeling this itch as COVID uh, progressed, but then it, it started pulling back some. And um, long story made short with that, the, 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 the call started to come, and I remembered what Dr. Graham had told me. And I told my board, and um, they said, well, uh, wow, really? And I go, well, uh, the day's been coming. You know, it's, it's almost 22 years now, and I've loved this, but uh, this might be that the Lord's given me a piece. They said, well, no, no, no. Let's, we had a warehouse that we had rented out, and um, uh, the, the price, the, the owner wanted to um, raise the price like five grand from 9,500 to 14,500 or whatever. And then, um, which was ridiculous, and he wanted to gut it out and put uh, bankrupt uh, COVID businesses and church furniture in there. It was a bad scene. So we started checking for other places, and then we all we couldn't find anything. We also checked with uh, Pastor Malcolm Wild, who's been a mentor to me, Calvary at Merritt Island. And um, uh, I said, he says, well, do you have somebody that can take the church, a young guy? Or I said, my, my youth guy went south. Um, there was another guy, a friend of his. He, I'm not sure where he is. He's MIA. There's a guy that's older that's a Calvary guy. And no, I said, no offense, Pastor Malcolm, but he's like 75. Malcolm wasn't. Malcolm's 75. Barely 70. He's 74 or 5. <laughs> yeah. But this was, yeah. And uh, he goes, no, no, no. He goes, yeah, you're right. You don't, you don't want to turn it over to somebody just at that age. That's my suggestion. And he says, what are you thinking? And I said, well, there's three other Calvaries in town. We're all friends. I was the one that rodeoed them together and, you know, uh, to get together every few months and talk and pray and hang out and break bread and not just with Calvary's with different churches. And, um, anyway, um, he said, wow, well, um, yeah, he says there's some solid churches, one in particular, you might be thinking about that one. So I said, I think I might be. So fast forward to a pastor's day every three or four months, they do a Calvary pastor's day, a Calvary Merritt Island. Usually I'm blessed to lead the worship there. I led the worship. And then Malcolm said, can I announce what's going on? And I said, sure. And uh, so he said, you know, Keith is being called out to full-time uh, evangelism. There's uh, really, um, uh, you know, a handful of people at the church. They're starting to come back. Um, he had some people go south on him. Um, he's, he's had this prophetic, you know, thing that Billy Graham shared with him for years that I had shared with Malcolm a long time ago. And uh, he said, uh, he says, it looks like he's being called out in, uh, to do full-time evangelism and music and, and travel. And he says, you know, he's been in a lot of your churches. You guys know him, and let's pray for him. And we did. And then at the um, young guy came up to me, Pastor Eric Souza, who's from Tucson, uh, Robert Furrow, Calvary Chapel, Tucson. I think, you know, it's a fairly large, big, big church. And so um, Eric's a very gifted teacher. He's young. He's 38. He's been there for 10 years. And um, so he, he comes up and he goes, hey, Keith, if you and Christy want to come to our church, um, he goes, you're more than welcome to come. You know, we'd love to have you. And uh, I said, you're sure now? <laughs> and he goes, yeah. He says, we would. And so I was like, wow. So uh, we went back. Uh, uh, it was agonizing, this part, going to the church. I went up to the mountains for a few days and uh tried to wrestle with the Lord. I said, Jacob couldn't do it, but I bet I could beat the Lord on this one. <laughs> and it was hard, you know, and, um, and, uh, and, but, but the Lord gave me a peace and all I could see was people's faces, you know, not that it was ever about me or about the pastor. Uh, it's about the Lord, you know, but yet we're people when we get close to people. And I knew that, um, but, uh, he gave me a peace. People that long without loving them. Right. Yeah. There was attachments. And so, Came back, told my board, I said, you know, everything that we had tried to do and the last resort was start up at an elementary school, do the pop-up church. I said, I got to be honest, guys. I says, I'm, I, my heart's not in that. I, 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 there's three other healthy calories and a big Bible teaching church right down the street. 1,200 churches in Jacksonville. Half of them are actually pretty solid Bible teaching churches from what I know. And uh, so there's no... Um, like, gee, we're out in the middle of nowhere. There's no, no nowhere to go to church. There's no calories. They're everywhere. So anyway, um, we announced it. Only one person. There was some crying. And I said, we have to do this. I'm going to write a book on how to grow your church. 
and you tell them that you're closing because it was packed. We'd never had that many people ever. I'm like, what do you? And you know, I'm thinking, just people love bad news. And, you know, what's what's going on? <laughs> it's, but everybody was very gracious. There was one guy that told my assistant pastor, says, why is Pastor Keith leaving us uh, to start his own ministry? And Pastor Nelson said, he's he's not starting his own ministry. He's always done outreach and evangelism for 25 years, 30 almost at the time. He said he's gone, he's just going to keep doing what he's doing, and the Lord's already opening more doors to do that. So the is last that, two years, that's what I've been doing full-time, First Coast Outreach Ministries. Um, blessed to work with BGEA as a, as a um, chaplain for Billy Graham thing. Uh, Samaritan's Purse sometimes. I go around, I do worship, I do evangelism at four or five churches. I'm grateful to be here tonight, blessed, thank you. Um, and uh, Sunday I fly back and then go to uh, a pastor's conference at Stone Mountain, doing some things there, and then Lexington, and then home for a while. But I'm uh, on the road a lot. I love it. We've got a lot of local uh, ministry going on in uh, evangelism in Jacksonville. And that church, Reach Church, uh, it's a it's a Calvary. Um, we've got already in two years, I think maybe fifteen, if not twenty, young people mainly um, that want to go out, that do go out, and do evangelism with us. You know, music schools, chapels, prisons, and some of them occasionally travel with me. Well, I've, uh, the reason I wanted to do this before you share them in music, and and we'll we'll stop, and you can do that. But I it, I think it's good sometimes to have a little bit of context when a person comes in and even those that knew you from before that are here um, it's been a long time and so the to give context to some of the the songs and the things that you say I think is really important and plus it gives us a better idea how to pray for you um, I'm sure that your experiences on the road now are not near as interesting and adventurous as when I was traveling with you but um <laughs> No, how could they be, Ryan? <laughs> I'm not going to go there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh this, you, that's we had another a blast. Book. We had a lot of fun. That's another book. I thought we had fun. <laughs> we opened for the Newsboys even down in West yeah, Palm. We and, did. Uh, we did. And Phil okay. Keggy and the park down here. It was a lot of yeah. fun. Yeah. Long history. Well, let's pray for Keith and let's let him bless us with music. Father, thank you so much for uh, the opportunity to to sit here and to hear Keith's heart and the way that you've been leading him. Uh, Lord, I am singularly blessed to have been uh, able to to watch a lot of this up close. And um, Lord, I just thank you so much for the work that you do in those who lead in the body of Christ. And Lord, we lift him up to you and we just ask that you would give him strength that you would give him uh, an ability to continue to step out in the things that you're leading him to. Uh, Lord, that there would be a harvest of souls through the ministry that you've given to him. Father, bless his family, uh, Christy and the kids. Lord, be with them when he has to get on the road. And uh, Lord, just bless them and encourage them. And bless us tonight through his ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. music uh and i've told you this before brian but i want to tell you again in front of everybody I, that i do appreciate so much the opportunity to come on staff for those three years and uh be mentored and have a pastor that 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 could jam for the lamb guitar and singing and and, and harmonica and and y'all are blessed and 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 so thank you brian for helping he disappeared now and he's a for helping make and mold and you know you all know life is experience as we meet people along the way and then we realize months years later it's just like oh wow you know i remember you know brian used to say that you know bob used to say that um my boss pastor stefan chavidji he used to say that go talk to him okay and all these things are make and mold us uh into the people that we are as the Lord uses people. And you've been a part of that. Some of you have been a part of that. So I didn't want to forget that and say that because that's very important. So um, let's do some worship and then uh, we'll share. I'll share in between songs a little bit. I think Brian.
and said uh, it was okay to go to what midnight or something, right? Yeah. We're gonna do we're gonna go short tonight. And we got more pictures for you from the band and all. No, we got, I hope that God, literally to God, please no. No, no I think we're gonna go to maybe eight eight fifteen ish. Na 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 Oh la 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 Jesus na 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 Oh no We worship the God who was We worship the God who is We worship the God who evermore will be we opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Sing with me if you know it. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Sing it. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. He won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Na 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 na. Oh Jesus. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause He hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God, still rolling stones away. Hey, there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord singing. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet, no, we shout out your prayer. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord tonight at Lighthouse. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. He won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Is my guitar coming in and out? Oh, okay, it's it's on the it's on the buds. That's okay. It doesn't matter if it just. O'Brien, oh, where are you? We got a harmonica song. There he is. So we're going to do a couple, maybe a few, uh, songs that we used to do a mere quarter century ago. Uh, <laughs> it is, isn't it? Do y'all remember? I remember when I was a kid and my parents, you know, oh, time goes so fast, you know, and everything. I'm like, summer vacation? 
you know, it, it, see, it seems like it's forever. Three months seemed like a year when I was a kid, you know. Now three months? I can't believe the holidays are going to be here in a few months, right? It's crazy. Anyway, but time flies when you're having fun, too. <laughs> Don't treat me like they used to since I laid my, my burdens down. Friends don't treat me no, they don't. like they used to since I laid my, my burden down. One more time on the harmonica band. Does he play like that every Sunday morning? I'm sure he does. He can. Now you know he can. Forget about the guy in the spandex. Think about your pastor. Okay. So this is one of the songs that um, I do a lot of prison ministry in Jacksonville. Uh, gosh, we've been to un all kinds of um, different prisons, and I have... Uh, quite a few um, pastor friends, evangelist friends that um, um, a black friend of mine, Rev. Fred Young, 
Um, and he is an evangelist of Ames. He's also, I got him to be a, uh, a chaplain uh, with BGEA. He hasn't gone out on the field with us yet, but he's going to. And he's on the street corners ministering. I could go on and on, but he, um, I was doing actually uh, some prison ministry here, but not like jumping in, uh, like in um, Jacksonville. Um, and uh, this is a song that I do. Um, we do in the prisons. This is a song that we do also do like City Rescue Mission, Salvation Army, um, Trinity Rescue Mission, Beaches Rescue Recovery Mission. Um, and uh, it, it, it really is a fun song, but yet it, it, um, it encourages the guys and the gals. And maybe it will for you, too, because you say, you know what, um, I got some stinking thinking going on. I'm depressed. That divorce was hard. The chemo didn't work. If you would have told me we'd be upside down financially right now, Pastor Keith, <laughs> wow. Can't sleep at night. We all go through stuff. But Jesus is the rock who rolls our blues away. Jesus is the rock, he rolls my blues away. Well, Jesus is the rock, he'll roll our blues away. Ow. Ow. Jesus is the rock, he rolls our blues away. If you're out on the street, you're really feeling down and low. You're out on the street and you ain't got no place to go. No, no. You're out on the street. Jesus wants to save your soul because, yeah. Well, Jesus is the rock and he'll roll your blues away. Yes, he will. Jesus is the rock. He'll roll your blues away. Ow, 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 ow. Jesus is the rock, rolls our blues away. Take it away, Brian. up in the morning that sky ain't very bright and blue you know it's true you wake up in the morning and the big world's after you yes it is you wake up in the morning jesus gonna pull you through yeah. because well jesus is the rock he'll roll your blues away he'll take away that depression discouragement Jesus is the rock, it roll your blues away. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Jesus is the rock and it rolls your blues away. Yeah. Hit it again, Brian. in the mirror your face causes it to crack 
when you're through with your day and you feel like you're being attacked. Ephesians 6, spiritual warfare. Jesus loves you, baby, now that's a fact. Why? Because Jesus is the rock and he'll roll your blues away. Jesus is the rock, he'll roll your blues. Jesus is the rock and he'll roll your blues. Jesus is the rock and he'll roll your blues. Jesus is the rock and Give him that bag because he'll roll your blues away. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He still got it. I really didn't have any doubt. the harp. So, um, I don't know about you, but unfortunately, when trials, tests, temptations, problems come my way, too many times I'm quick to try to troubleshoot and fix it myself before going to the Lord. And life is ups and downs and all around. Jesus never said it would be perfect at all. We live in a fallen world. I don't have to tell you all that. We know. We see it every day. I... I I've never seen this one before, and I don't know if it's common or not, but the other day I was driving down here on Academy, and I was behind a car. I said, no way. It's pretty blatant that that big old bumper sticker says Wiccan. It, it's Wiccan, you know? Pretty blatant that, you know, and if you use it for medical purposes, okay. That's okay. It's okay. A lot of people don't use marijuana for that. And, and, and pot's legal in your state. And then somebody said, oh, psilocybin mushrooms are legal now, too. I had a friend who said, my son grows them sometimes and then, um, you know, tells us that, you know. And it's just like, they're, they're not legal. Are they? Oh, yeah, they're legal. And then I read up on it and he said, there's more things coming with psychedelic, uh, psychosomatic drug, whatever. The it's like, what is going on? But too many times you and I, and I had, and he's doing much better. We have three boys. One was a wild child. Doing much, much better now. Not going to church, but, you know, doing a lot better. But my wife and I tried everything years ago, you know, to do, you know, everything. Nothing worked. And she goes, Keith, he's just like you. I'm like, well, no, he's not. He's like you. He's the kind of kid you say, don't touch that stove, son. And he'd just stand it five years, six years old, and just look at you and just touch it. Ah, you made me do it. No, he told you not to touch it. And so that's just one example. And then pray for your pastor, because sometimes uh, those fiery Ephesians 6 starts of the enemy, they fly, they come. And sometimes it's sad to say, I've seen it seen it. It's not just Calvary chapels or Baptists or Methodists or Lutheran or Catholic or I've seen Christians shoot their wounded too many times. Their own. Right? But whatever the case is, here's what the Lord says in Second Chronicles 2015. 
Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army. Sometimes it rains, it pours, right? We're coming at us from everywhere. Fiery darts. Work, family, health, finances, marriage, kids, car breaks. You name it. Don't be afraid, discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours, but mine, saith who? The Lord. The Lord. This song helps remind me that it's his battle. That's scripture, but it's based on this song. And so I hope that it ministers to you too. We use it a lot. Outreach and church. Because there's a lot of hurting Christians in church. And we're too quick to say, by the way, how you doing, brother? Oh, good. Praise the Lord. This and that. And get in your car. Like, I don't know if I'm going to help you, Mitch. Don't put on the church face. Be real with your pastor. I'm sure most of you are. He's here to help. He's a blessing. Let him do what he's supposed to do. And let especially Jesus do what he wants to do in your life and mine. Fight our battles for us. Why we're on knees, bended knee. That's how we fight the battle. Nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I'll fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you, and every fear I'll lay at your feet. I'll sing through the night, oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? Yeah. For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you when all I see are the ashes do you see the beauty thank you God when all I see is a cross God you see the empty too. listen so when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifting high. Oh, God. In every fear, I'll lay at your feet. I'll sing through the night. Oh, my God, the battle belongs to you. Almighty fortress, you go before us. 
Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of God. So when I'll fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted. Every fear I'll lay at your feet. I'll sing through the night. Oh my God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I'll lay at your feet. And I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Oh my God. The battle belongs to you. You're our God. And the battle belongs to you. you. Praise the Lord. I'm pretty convinced that uh, fear is the biggest tool in the enemy's box. <laughs> fear of finances, fear of a family situation, a friendship, a marriage. Fear, fear, fear. And it manifests itself, the enemy, so many different ways. None of us. And it is something that 99% of human beings, especially men, don't want to ever admit. We're afraid. We're afraid. Because we don't have the mortgage money. Because the doctor said it's 50-50. Fear. But faith. Fear. F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real. That's, that's what the enemy does. Faith. We need to have it, even in the midst of a storm. I'll tell you really quick, this I'll never forget this one. I was down in Fort Lauderdale a few months ago with uh, uh, Billy Graham chaplains. There was flooding down there, and they had a lot of stuff going on, helping people. On the Lord's dime. It's a, it's a wonderful ministry. And... Um, you know, people are getting saved, and uh, they're fixing their houses and everything. So I became friends uh, with this, um, with Chaplain Ricky Spencer is his name. He lives in uh, Nashville. And he says, Keith, I got to tell you this story. He says, I'm former military, and I've never seen anything like this in my life. He says, last year, so it would have been last year, there was a, an F-5, I think it was in the Oklahoma or something, tornado came in. He says, a mile and a half wide. And I can't remember the name of the town either. Sorry. But he says, we, uh, SP and BGEA chaplains, he says, we're coming in. You know, the National Guard was already there. Uh, they wouldn't let us in at first. Um, uh, 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 Red Cross was there. And then he goes, and Samaritan's Purse and BGEA, all the trucks and the buses and the shops and the doctors and nurses, pro bono, uh, the rolling. He says, we come over the hill. He says, I've never, I've seen combat. And I've seen stuff just leveled. By, he says, I've, I've never seen so much decimation and things just leveled, destroyed. He says, he says half the people in our van were, were crying, men and women, just because. And there were people in their front yards day after just going. And, and their, their house is gone. Everything's gone. There's just rubble. 
and, and smoke and stench. It was horrible, he said. They came across a family about 10 minutes into the drive. <laughs> they've got a Bluetooth speaker and they've got Christian music going and they're, they're singing praise and worship. And so, stop. What is this phenomenon? And they tell the story about how when the sirens went off the day before, and they only had not even a minute, the father said, to get to the cellar, to go down, shut the doors. He's seen The Wizard of Oz. He says this is a lot more intense. And then you go down into the other one, and you pull the metal doors, and you do the bar and the concrete, the CBS block. And he says, so the sirens go off. He goes, my wife grabs our daughter, starts bringing her down the stairs. He goes, our five-year-old, Caleb, is out there, and he says, my wife is saying, Caleb, come here with mommy, come here with mommy, because he goes, I got my wife's hand. Like, it's starting, you can already feel the the stuff and see the swirling uh, of, of things caught up in this F5, almost 200 mile an hour winds in the, in the outer banks of the vortex. Is, it's already doing its thing. So she's trying, she's trying to pull away from her husband to get Caleb, who's heading towards the gym set, the place. Because <laughs> he just, mommy, I'm going to, no, boy. Pretty soon, nobody can hear anybody. It's just like, I don't know if you've ever been through, I haven't. So he says, I had to make a split second decision. He says, I pulled my wife down the stairs. I grabbed her, I locked the cellar doors and because he says if I if I if I let her go, we would all die, all four of us would die. So I had to make that decision. He says we grabbed her, she's screaming, yelling, kicking, no, no, no. Imagine down into the <laughs> locked steel part of the cellar for the next hour or so he says this is I, we've been through some tornadoes but nothing like this he says we couldn't even i couldn't even my wife was screaming and crying he says i couldn't hear nobody could hear anything except this just like a train station meets a 747 meets an air he said it was deafening we had to he goes the clouds finally uh lift the noise stops we we go out. I said, stay here. My, he goes, my wife is just, please, Jesus, please, Christian family, please, Jesus. And um, he goes out and he opens the doors, and there's no town there. He says, like a nuke went off. Because my wife is half hysterical, but now she's saying, God told me he's alive. God told me. She's like, He's like, honey, he is alive. He's with Jesus. He has a new celestial body. No more pain. I'm sure the Lord brought him up there quick, you know. She says, nope, he's alive. No sign. Okay. A couple hours later, um, a Red Cross van was about seven miles out of town on a rural dirt road. I don't know where they were going. And the um, co-pilot, one in the right seat, looks over across the driver and sees something just 50 feet from the, from the dirt road. Stop, 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 stop. It's a little boy. And they're like, oh, my God. They stop and they get out and they go over there. And he's going like this. He's got a couple scratches. That's it. And they said, are you? Who are you? Are you? And all he could keep saying was, where's the man in the clouds? Where's the man that was talking to me in the clouds? Where's the man? And they thought he was just delusional. You know, I don't know that they were Christians. He says, where's the man in the clouds? It was Caleb, seven miles from his family, lifted up into 200-mile-an-hour winds. Seven, number of completion, yeah? 
tossed them that far away. They took them to the emergency room. Doctor said, I've never, ever seen or heard anything like this in my life. These couple scratches. That's it. What is it in your life that you think God can't do? What kind of storm is going on? And everything's scattered. And you're sinking, thinking it doesn't even matter anymore because it's just like, man. And God says, the battle belongs to me. I can do all things. I'm a miracle maker. I have a plan. I have a future. I have a hope. All things work together for those who love me. Do you trust me through this storm of unemployment? Do you trust him through the health issue, through the finances, through the divorce, through the death? Do you trust him? Because this is what he does, his miracles. And if he doesn't heal here, he'll heal up there. It's a win, win, win. Because Jesus God is in control. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible, it tells me so. Little one to him below. How weak, but he is strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus loves me, he who died, yeah. heaven's gate to open so wide, he will wash away, wash away my sin, let this little child come in, yeah. Jesus loves me, and he loves you too. Yes, he loves you. Yes, yes. loves you. Yes, he loves us.
Jesus, take this heart of mine. Make it pure and holy thine. On the cross, you died for all of us. We're going to try to live our life with thee. We're singing, yes. Jesus loves me, and he loves you too. Yes. He loves you. La, la, la. Yes. He loves you. Yes. He loves us. Another harp song, Brian? Do we have time? It's only 11.30. Are you guys good? Hey, the doors are locked, so just get comfortable. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, thank you for your patience. When's dinner? Oh, somebody brought food up. No. That'll be it. <laughs> um, excuse me. section over here is rocking. You guys, clap your hand or something. Your foot, snap your fingers. You don't have to, but it's kind of fun. It was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieve. Oh, how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers toils and snares I have already come tis grace that brought me Saved thus far, and grace, yeah, it'll lead me home. Shining as the sun, yeah. we've no less days 
changed oh to sing God's praise then when we first begun yeah one more time Brian Praise the Lord. So, here's the thing, and you all know this because I know you're taught well here. Brian's a great teacher. What are you laughing? <laughs> uh oh. I'm not going to get in the middle of it. <laughs> Was it the spandex? No. <laughs> uh, not that you ever had. Well, no, you did wear them that time. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't want you to get that picture of your pastor. To... <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was the, the AIDS thing. Uh, anyway, how did we get on that one? Jesus says, let your light shine. Like a city on a hill, all lit up. Go tell the whole world the good news, Mark 16, 15. He says, what's the good news? That little Caleb is one of billions of God's stories, of things that he's doing around the globe that will never see online or read online or hear in the news. <laughs> when they reported that story, they said a miracle happened. That a boy, They said a boy was found and they never seen anything like it. But they didn't say the part where where's the man that in the cloud that glows, that talks to me. They're not going to say that. Let our light shine. Let your light shine at home when you go home to the one who's sitting in the lazy boy chair and with the remote already through a 12-pack of Bud Light. Chorus Light? I <laughs> Picky. Tough crowd. Tough crowd. Uh, what is that? <laughs> It's not a giant rat or something that's going to jump on. No, okay. Let our light shine. 2 Timothy 4, 5. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Many Christians say, oh, that's for evangelists. That's to do the work of an evangelist. No, Paul's telling Timothy, not just Timothy. Paul's th telling all of us, Holy Spirit through Paul, do the work of an evangelist and fulfill our ministries on planet Earth. You might be the only Bible somebody ever reads just by the way that you act. 
maybe you don't even have to say something to be nice to, but if you don't have to, you're like, I'm super shy, man, or whatever. They shall know you by your fruits. Is there fruit that's hanging of your faith? And they see that you're the one that's not going to stand in the in the office, in the cafeteria, badgering and bombing the boss and saying all these bad things. Hey, guys, I think we should just pray for him or just excuse me. I go, oh, there goes Christian. You know, yeah, there he goes. Because you're being a light. You know what happens with those situations a lot of times? We think that it doesn't register with people, and then a week, a month, a year down the road, it happens all the time. I mean, people say, do you have a minute? Because I just want to ask you about something. I saw the way that you acted at work or at home or this and that. What, 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 what caused you to do that? It's the light and it's the love of the Lord Jesus inside us. Ephesians 3.17 says he makes his home within our heart. He's in you if you're a Christian. Who's a Christian in here? Anybody? And if you're not, praise God that you're here. We have Christ in us. And he wants to shine through you and through me. So let him do that. There's no greater feeling in the world for me than seeing somebody get that divine download, accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. But here's how it happens especially these days, most of the time, it's outside of the church. My understanding, and correct me if I'm right, wrong, Brian, but the three times that church is mentioned in the Bible, it's not talking about a building. It's talking about people. You're the church. I'm the church. Who cares how big, how small, where, this, that? Who cares? That's man. God says, I just want you to be a light that shines. Because I tell you, people aren't coming. I've been at several churches, and, you know, it's not like it was. Every pastor says the same thing. It's not like it was before COVID and even before that. People aren't coming to church like they used to. What does that mean? We need to let our light shine out there more than ever. Because a lot of times unsaved people, they still do come in churches, but a lot of times they don't. So that's why doing the work of an evangelist outside of the church walls, being the church. We say in the South, that dog will hunt. It works. So as we leave here in a little bit, hopefully we'll have some fellowship and stuff but, and some food. Well, that's coming later. Let your light shine. Uh, it's an honor, privilege, blessing of being here with y'all tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Brian. Love you, brother. Learned a lot from this guy. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. What are we going to do?
I got the light of Jesus. I'm going to let it shine. Yes, we are now. I got the love of Jesus. Going to let it shine. Give the love of Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Woo! Praise the Lord. Bless you guys. Keith's got a table over here. You can sign up to get on their mailing list for their ministry. And there's some CDs. I think CDs over there. Yeah, yeah, CDs over there. Um, just be a blessing to him. And thank you, Keith, for the blessing that you've been to us tonight. Bless you guys. Have a great evening. <laughs>